Today, I'm meeting one of my personal idols, a former downhill world champion, three times enduro world champion, and has podiumed at every EDRE race that she has ever entered since 2020. Uh, now, she is a Bosch ambassador now and has really embraced EMTB. So, I think she's pretty qualified to teach me how to ride an e-bike like a pro. Today, we're going to show you good technique and bad technique and go through some of the key points to make you a better rider in both climbing and descending. But first, let's meet our pro, Tracy Mosley. Tracy, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. Tell me, what have the EDRE World Cups been like lately? They've been amazing. They're still definitely evolving year on year. Uh, they're kind of challenging us in different ways. They slightly condensed them now, so there's just two loops. So you get two batteries throughout the course of the race day. Uh, often that loop will be up to three hours probably in length, up to 1,500 meters of climbing. So you're on that limit of how much that battery is going to last. Yeah. Um, normally one or two climbing stages per loop with three or four time descents or sometimes more. So we get a huge amount of riding over the course of the day and you definitely feel like you've had a full workout up and down the hill. So it's, yeah, it's been really fun. I heard a rumor that Finale was your favorite, is that right? Yeah, I think, I think Finale's always done a really good job. And I think that the terrain kind of just lends itself to e-biking because there's lots of technical climbing as well as the amazing descents. And I think for me personally, I love to ride my bike technically uphill and down. And certainly with the e-bike, it makes it possible. I don't really want to be riding up a fire road on my e-bike when I could be doing that on a normal bike. So yeah, Finale always has a great, you know, the, the route's always amazing. The climbing that's not even timed is still a challenge in itself. So you really right. feel like you've had a yeah, proper workout bend the day. Tell me about your bike that you're, this is what you race on. Yep. Um, I can see you've got the Bosch SX race there. Can you yeah, tell me so a bit Yeah, so this is, this is the, the Trek rail. I've actually gone to an extra small, not extra small, a small, I should say, so one size smaller um, than I've had previously this year, just to try to see if I felt like I was able to maneuver the bike a bit more. Okay. I think that's always my, the hardest thing with the e-bikes is they are heavier. Um, and sometimes you lose that kind of nimbleness that you would get on the normal bike. So I've gone for a small, um, yeah, race motor. So that gives me, it's a little bit lighter. I think about 200 grams lighter. So trying to again, reduce that weight. Um, it gives me 400% um, of support when I'm trying to get the max power I can out there. So it's still the same, same max torque and the same max power as the other, the normal CX motor, but it's just, it's a little bit more, I would say, aggressive in its nature and it's designed just for racing so it's like it gives you that acceleration as quick as it possibly can there's no kind of like nice gentle like tail off when the, mm. when the support stops it's very much like an on off and it's very much designed for just pure out and out racing and giving you the, the maximum you can get to try and eke out those extra seconds so yeah. yeah it's been a great setup so far nice short cranks lots of little things um that certainly are a bit different to e-bike racing than would be on a normal bike So we're about to go and do some climbing techniques. Um, tell me, how have the EDRE climbing stages evolved and how do you prepare for that? Yeah, they've definitely kind of changed from that first outset in 2020 when it was literally just like, here's a steep climb, yeah. almost can you get up it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and they were, they were really good fun, but it was also if you made a mistake, you lost so much time. And I think that was the thing, they didn't want to impact the overall results. Ultimately, it still is an endurer. It's meant to be about the downs rather than the ups. So they've kind of evolved it now. So there will be some climbing, but they're not very long. You're not going to lose you know, minutes of time. But they're actually doing some now that are actually multiple kind of ups and downs. So a bit more like right. trialsy. So really sharp corners. You almost have to wheelie pedal around up and over rocks, down a steep corner, sharp turn, and then that like maximum acceleration up and over something. So mm. I've actually quite enjoyed them. And they're like a different, again, another challenge, learning to really control the bike and use the power and get up and over stuff. So you almost don't know when you're going to what it's going to be. Um, and every time I go, I feel like I should come home and make my own little course and I should practice this. But it's not something we generally do when you go for a ride, yeah. but I never seem to find the time to do it. So every time I go, I think, I wish I'd practice this more. Yeah. But uh, ultimately, yeah, they're, they're a really cool challenge. And I love the fact that that's the big difference between e-biking and, and enduro. You're getting to do these climbs as well. All right, Tracy, enough chat. Should we go and learn how to climb? Yeah, definitely. All right, let's go. 
Tracy has a Bosch CX motor and further still, it's the limited edition race model, whereas I'm on the lower torqued Bosch SX motor. Well, that's my excuses out of the way for the climbing section. Let's see what else I can learn from Tracy. Right, we've already had a couple of practice goes on this, haven't we, Tracy? It's very steep, very rooty. I've already realised my first two mistakes in comparison to you. My saddle was too low, low, uh, and my gears were too high, so yeah. I wasn't getting my cadence right. So yeah. let's talk about grip to start with. How do we get good grip? Because that's what it's all about, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you've got to get grip. It's actually pretty greasy today as well. We've got a load of roots and they're greasy. So. Cadence is massive, massively, massively important for e-bikes. I don't think I can ever you know, overestimate yeah. how important that is. Yeah. And people think, well, why are you spinning away? But you need to keep that momentum going. As soon as you go too slowly cadence, you try and put power down, all you get is this big zzz, spin, yeah. and then you're off the roots. So you need to keep that momentum going by turning the pedals without any really big changes of power. Um, saddle height is really, really important. Everyone's different with that, but definitely not fully high, not fully down. So you're kind of in the middle. So you can still keep that weight over the back wheel to keep that traction, but you're also able to manoeuvre. I think the biggest thing as well is, one of the commitment is actually <laughs> looking at this yeah. and saying, I am going to get up there rather than like, oh, I'm not sure I'm going to make it. That's yeah. a really big thing about climbing is actually committing to it, actually being focused on getting that line and choosing a really good line. Um, and I know, yeah, that line was definitely an issue to my commitment and my cadence, to, to yeah. be honest, because I was picking such a sharp turn that actually I was stalling, whereas you had a nice curve. You yeah. went for the outside route. So, uh, yeah, that's let's practice that, shall yeah. we? Let's go for some good technique. <laughs> So I've gone into an easier gear, I've raised my dropper post and I'm managing to make it up here by improving my line choice. But now I'm getting to this really big rooty bit and I've messed up. <laughs> Tracy, help me. <laughs> so first thing I noticed was just it's where we look ahead. So same for anything, whether we're descending or climbing, it's all about vision. You need to look where you want to go, otherwise you're not going to go there. So straight away, you're staring at the route here. By lifting your head, you're really lifting your weight up and you're looking ahead. So certainly lifting your head up, looking at looking. And then the other thing is you need to be able to shift that weight off that rear wheel. Because once that rear wheel hits that route and you're stood on there and you're about to stamp on the pedals, it's just going to spin. So you need the acceleration all up to the point. You need a really quick shift of your body weight. Like we're standing up out of the saddle to get yourself up and over and then a gentle re-engagement of the power. So you just, if you're really aggressive with your power, you're just going to spin. So it's a really quick movement of changing body position and way to go. Another really important thing I think about body position is making sure where you sit on the saddle can make a massive difference. So in normal seated positions here, when I'm climbing something steep, I'll shift my body weight all the way forward to there. So I'm kind of crouched in over the front, getting the weight down and stopping that front wheel from lifting, which is often the big mistake everyone finds. Obviously, grip is really important in climbing. Um, tell me, do you actually change your tyre pressures for a climbing stage in the EDRE? Yeah, there definitely has been some that I have, especially if it's wet and greasy and you really are, it's just a climb as well. There's not lots of puncture potential. I will drop a good six, seven PSI, sometimes even more out. So you really are just getting that traction. Mm. You, the only thing you've got to do then is make sure you remember to pump it back up at the top yeah. before you enter the next downhill <laughs> stage. But yeah, it can make a huge difference and it is worth doing just a quick yeah. release at the bottom. Always have pressure gauge with you and check them again at the top. So yeah, it's yeah. worth it. Now, and obviously you've got the special race mode with your race motor, but for everyone else, um, I think it's often a choice between turbo and EMTB. So yeah. um, what would you go for outside of race? Well, everyone assumes, oh, I want turbo. Turbo everywhere. And actually, to be honest, I think turbo sometimes is used in places where it's not appropriate. And I think having too much power at your disposal is often what you, where you see people failing, is they're just putting the pedals down and that turbo is just giving them too much grip, mm. too much acceleration, sorry, too much grip, too much spinning of the back wheel, losing yeah. the grip. So I often feel that EMTB is much more a natural feeling mm. um, kind of power delivery. And sometimes if I'm struggling to get up something in turbo, I will knock it back to EMTB and try that. So it's, again, it's, it's definitely, it's lots of techniques. It's not just about the mode, but also don't assume just because it's uphill and steep 
I need turbo. Yeah. I think you need to learn to play around and realise the benefits of both, to be honest. Yeah, EMTB is definitely more consistent with power delivery for sure. And you also get the motor overrun with that yep. mode as well, which is helpful if you want to back off the pedals, uh, reset yourself a bit, or just get hop over a route like we were doing there. You yep. still get that assistance without the power. Yeah, that overrun is really important, I think, when you get to a log or a step in the, in the trail. Exactly there, when you, you don't want to have to pedal and then get that you know, spinning of the back wheel, it gives you a good chunk of acceleration and kind of pushes you forward enough to get up and over the obstacle before you then need to start pedaling. So it allows you to kind of have a break from pedaling to get up and over something. So it's again, it's something that's really tricky to learn to practice, but again, it's getting used to it and using the mode for the right, right time and the right place. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure I'm an EMTB pro now, Tracy, at climbing. So uh, should we make me a pro at descending? Let's do it. <laughs> So would you set up your bike um, differently to say your non-assisted bike in a, at all? Yeah, definitely a few things. I think tyres for one, obviously the added weight of the bike, you tend to not have that same feel. So you do tend to hit things probably a bit harder. So I'd probably either go up in pressure or potentially even a you know, thicker sidewall. Um, I always think suspension, you might want to look at potentially, you know, again, it's up personal preference but maybe just upping the pressures a little bit again for the extra weight sometimes the speed you come into things um, and brakes certainly upping the disc size is another thing you know the stopping distance with an e-bike once you've got this mass and you up to speed it takes a lot longer to stop so having a slightly bigger disc means you've got a bit more leverage a bit more power to stop um, so definitely a few little things are worth playing around with and seeing how you get on. So let's talk about breaking into a corners. How would you approach good braking technique into corners? Well, I think it's the same e-bike or non-e-bike, to be honest. It's all about trying to maintain the speed throughout the trail. Obviously, early braking, you make sure you're braking before the corner, less braking in the corner to try and get off the brake as soon as you can, carry your speed out. Um, and I think with the e-bike, you've just got to be a bit more aware of kind of what that stopping power is going to be. So maybe even stop, start thinking about braking a little bit earlier um, being aware of that and also making sure you've got that strength for your e-bike. You know, I think it's really important to realise that you're stopping and starting something mm. that's heavier. Um, Especially going. when you break and the forces are trying to stand you up, you're then having to resist that and the weight of the bike. Exactly, Everything yeah. Plays Just in. the whole manoeuvring of the e-bike requires a bit more strength and a bit more kind of, I guess, effort to really move the bike from place to place. So yeah, just definitely really important as well, I think with braking is making sure that you use both brakes Lots and lots of people I know that are scared of that front brake because it sends you over the handlebars and they tend to use them as if it's like an on-off switch rather than a dimmer <laughs> switch. And I always think it's really important that you use your brakes and you're, it's not on and off. You really are like squeezing them on, off a little bit, on a little bit. Off. It's, you're constantly adjusting your braking point and your braking feel. And people I don't think appreciate how much time that takes to perfect, but that really is the most important thing. Your brakes are your control, your safety point, and just being safe with them. All right, body position is really important, climbing and descending. So yeah. what's your tips on that? I think for me, being able to stand up on your bike with pedals level, being mm. comfortable and confident there, being very centered on the bike, making sure you've got soft elbows, soft knees, so allowing the bike to give um, and looking ahead, making sure your head's up and it's looking ahead. It's not staring at the floor, not staring at the sky. Nice looking ahead on the trail. And I also think it's really important that we don't end up just hanging off the back of the bike when we're descending something steep. A lot of people do, that's yeah. a safety position. And mm. yes, if it does get steep, do go off the back, but make sure you come back to that centre position. Body position should always be something that we're constantly adapting on the trail. It's not yeah. one position that fits for the trail. It's constant movement on the bike. Yeah, so getting off the back might be fine for a steep, but that's actually trying to send to you, I guess, yeah, in that position. Exactly, yeah. And then everywhere else, you need to adjust yeah. to get that centre. Constantly moving and depending on the trail, matching where you need to be. Okay, how important is line choice? Oh, massively. Certainly if you want to, <laughs> certainly if you want to go fast yeah. and it's a good about the clock, carrying speed out of every corner on a trail can yeah. make such a huge difference. And I think it's so easy to just follow often it's just like the line that everyone's taken. And like for a trail like mm. this, you've got a really, really natural kind of groove that basically everyone's Defined. followed. And that is pointing straight at that big tree. So if you're gonna try and get out of that corner fast, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> if you come straight at it. Yeah. So the line choice is actually not the line choice. It's not what everyone else has taken sometimes. The smoother yeah. line is yeah. to actually go over the roots. I would say the so, tree. yeah. I think it's also it's always looking looking outside the box, I call it, but just not always being that kind of the sheep that follows everyone. And I think here, whether you come and look now, if you, you'd have to again set up early out here, mm -hmm. get up onto this side, 
And if you could get right close to the tree here, get over there into that groove, you basically have already started half of your corner. You're going to be cornering yeah. before you even get to the tree, into the corner, pulling out early for the next one, set the next one, because this is a section of corner, 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 corner. And if you get late in any one of these, you're just going to lose time down the whole trail. So it's yeah. like you've got to be out of each corner nice and set, soon to set up for the next one. Yeah, starting here, the corner starts here. The other line, the corner starts here. Yeah, exactly, which you're already <laughs> at the tree. Yeah. OK, it's just started raining, Tracy, which nicely leads me on to the next point, is that the environment and the weather is always changing. So to ride like a pro, how do we need to adjust for that? I think a lot of it's about being prepared. That's the main thing. So making sure you've got that tyre choice. Potentially, you might want to change to a more mud-suited tyre, so a spike, potentially. Mud guards, hugely important thing. Your vision is key. If you can't see where you're going, you're going to crash. So having a mud guard that stops that flicking into your face can help. Um, you might look at changing your suspension slightly as well, because you generally you'll be going a little bit slower. You might want a little bit more suppleness from your suspension, so possibly softening it or slowing things down. Um, and you the other thing, I was tire pressure as well. Tire or? pressure, yeah. You could definitely change tires and also reduce pressures potentially for more grip. Um, and always making sure I'm Mrs. Always Prepared, but I always, if it's going to rain, I don't want to be wet and cold for the whole day. And it can make a difference when you're racing. If you are out for five, six hours and you've not got a good kit, so waterproof jackets, just even spare pairs of gloves for me is always a key in the, in the bag, making sure they've always got dry contact with the handlebars. Cool. Tracy, thank you so much for spending some time with me today and making me like a pro, maybe? A little I bit. I think I've done a bit, yeah. <laughs> 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 all right guys thank you so much for watching and let us know what you think of the tips down in the comments below if you've got any pro tips that you've learned along the way and give us a big old thumbs up if you want to see more pros like tracy on this channel in the future